Welcome to 3 Billboards outside Evan Missouri's spoiler loaded review. If you haven't seen the spoiler free section, you should. So click on the card here and then come back here. There's some stuff in this movie that I don't like. Spoiler alert! Hi, I am Javier and this is the Geek Filter. Watch until the end for my extra thought on the film. I think every part of a movie should be thought through and everything that's shown must have a reason. Even because it's nice, even because it's like artistic or personal. When that doesn't happen, I get goosebumps. It's like my spider sense tingling and it gets stronger if the solution or alternative is easy to do. The Wife. Chief Willoughby's wife is played by Abby Cornish, an Australian actress and rapper. Okay, and she kept her accent, and I think that's totally unnecessary. More than that, it's distracting. On the other hand, she doesn't seem to have much to say other than breaking down when the chief dies. Nicely done, by the way. The chief seems to have a habit of talking trash while in front of his kids. And while he initially apologizes for it, his wife doesn't have anything to say about it. I don't know, it seems a bit unrealistic. A simple bail would have done it. The boss friend. Denise is Mildred's boss at the gift shop and she's also her friend. Not so close, although I don't know how close Mildred's friends would be because of her personality. But Denise stands by her side working as sort of a sidekick. Like she roots for Mildred on the whole billboard situation. But her presence is not too strong. I didn't like that she was there but not so much. But her role definitely serves Mildred's objective. Dad's girlfriend. The dumb, freakishly young girlfriend of Mildred's ex-husband is too dumb. I think her participation is disruptive to the extreme. The way she unconsciously walks into a family fight that involves a kitchen knife was so unsettling, it was actually funny. I didn't like how that situation made me feel, but I guess that was Martin McDonough's intention. So well done. The table. After the dumb girl from walking moment, father and son take the table and put it back in its place in an unemotional way, like almost robotic. This struck me as a bit unrealistic, but it's probably telling me that they're really used to being so violent with each other. The flashback told us a bit about that too. The flashback. I think it's completely unnecessary. The flashback is there to tell us that in the middle of a fight, Mildred told her daughter Angela that she hoped she gets raped and that was the last time she saw her. Okay, I get they're trying to justify why Mildred is so eager to find the killer, but I think it wasn't needed. I mean, the justification is meant to draw you nearer to Mildred, to empathize with her despite her strong and hot-headed personality. But by that moment in the film, you're pretty invested in the protagonist's story. You want her to achieve her goal. I don't think she needed any other reason than the love for her daughter and her own personality to make her pursue her goal. Sure, the writer wanted her to feel guilty and for guilt to be the drive that put the whole story in motion. But what it made me do was, meh, I think it would have been more compelling to leave Mildred without such a present proof of guilt about the killing and rape of her daughter. Giving her the moment to show us her guilt was just too evident for me. Finally, Dixon. I simply hated Officer Jason Dixon. I really did, but that's because the character is so well written and performed, especially performed. I'm sure that not many people could read the script without watching the movie. And imagine a character like the one we've seen on the screen. Apart from all this, I wanted to linger a bit on the main character. Mildred Hayes. From a screenwriting point of view, I believe she is brilliantly written. I think her dialogues and situations round her up as a complete human being, with her contradictions and needs and emotions. On top of that, there's the performance. Although Mildred's already human in paper, Frances McDormand does it. She elevates that written part and brings her to light with her contradictions and needs and emotions. Take her view on animals, for example. There are two moments when she interacts with animals in the movie. Movie. And those moments are not planted there to create a payoff later. They're there to help describe the character. First, she turns the beetle over to allow it to keep walking on the window edge of Welby's office. This is the second scene of the film and we're still getting to know Mildred. So this sign of compassion breaks the attitude she has towards other humans and makes her likable in the eyes of the audience. Then, like half an hour later, there's the scene with the deer. Mildred's fixing some plants below the billboards and a deer approaches her. She talks talks with it and gives some philosophical speech about death and the afterlife, reassuring the audience that she's not a villain and making us dive deeper into her motivations. Also, it serves as an excuse for making Mildred acknowledge that she knows her daughter's gone forever and that there's nothing that can bring her back. That's something of a response to what her ex-husband said to her earlier, that the billboards are not gonna bring Angela back. Well, now we know she knows that. Whether she already knew it and is just telling us or whether 
Whether she just accepted it because of what her ex-husband told her, we'll never know. It's probably more interesting, yet unnerving, to assume he had something to do with it. That leads me to the last comment in this video. The ex-husband. Notice how Mildred is not afraid of the cops, or of the fat dentist holding a little drill in his hand, or the whole town that might lynch her for attacking the beloved chief with her billboards. She's only afraid of two people, the ex-husband and the angry walking customer. We know that Mildred was beaten by her then-husband a bunch of times. We've even seen him become aggressive with her. When he's not close to her, she can attack him with words, her specialty. But if he's too close, she is afraid. Through her face of disdain, you can see her fear. And that's all on Francis McDormand. I think the angry walking customer, who later becomes more important to the story, is a parallel with her ex-husband. I think he's like a younger version of him. And that's why she fears him for a second. Again, when he's really close to her. Extra thought, there's one particular scene I love, the one with the priest. The dialogue is perfectly constructed and I really liked watching the look on the priest's face. It makes me think of Spotlight. And I know that many people in the world who have been close to victims of abuse by priests smile through that scene the way that I did. So what do you think? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more film reviews on the Geek Filter. And be sure to check out my Patreon page where there's exclusive spoiler loaded content with even more comments about each film. Thanks for watching! Bye!